Okay. So I don't normally <clears throat> do a lot of things like this, but uh, there's a guy on YouTube, um, Reggie Collects Comics. Great dude. I, I don't have any issue with him. Um, I, don't, I don't have anything against him. The only thing that I'm going to say is his latest video <clears throat> says, uh, stop using this common nonsensical term um, in comic book collecting. And what he's going off on is <clears throat> um, low grade is better than no grade. And he's... He's, he's not wrong in, in at least half of his statement. And what he's saying is it's, it's foolish if you want to try to go for like an 8.0 book and you pick up a 5.0 and go, well, at least I got this one. <clears throat> if your overall for that book is an 8.0, hold out for the 8.0. And of, of that, I am absolutely in 100% agreement on. Um, if, if you're trying to get, um, like for me, amazing Spider-Man 129, that is my holiest of holy grails. I don't want anything less than an 8.0 or an 8.5 if I can help it. Now that doesn't mean that, oh, I got $500. I'll just buy it. They're selling it for 500. It looks like trash. No. I have facsimile uh, books and conditions and things like that. And I'm perfectly happy having those until I get the grade I want. I agree with him there. Hold out for the grade that you want. However, the term is still completely valid in my eyes. Simply because there are some things you are not going to be able to get at the highest possible grade. I was looking through the comments. I was reading things like that. And this guy said I, his holy grail is Fantastic Four number one. He would much rather never have it than have the most beautiful 1.8 out there. I find that to be some of the most foolhardy, just even thought process in your head. If that is your holy grail and Fantastic Four number one is expensive. Let's see. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull it up here. Fantastic Four. Okay, so... Here is Comic Book Realm, and I know I use something different than everybody else when it comes to this, but Comic Book Realm is telling you that a 9.8 is 312,500. If we go to cgcdata.com, there's no such thing as a 9.8. They have never graded a 9.8. There is no 9.9, .9 and there is no 10. They do do not exist, okay? Not at all. So what that tells you is you are never going to see the 10, the 9.9, .9, or the 9.8. There have been two 9.6s. This is saying 275,000. I guarantee you if those show up on an auction somewhere, there's no way in hell they go for less than half a mil. No way in hell. It's impossible for them to go lower than that. So you have to figure what can you afford. Now, something like this, because it's so scarce as far as finding something in an insanely high value or an insanely high grade, what can you afford? And again, that's something else that Reggie brings up. So in this case... And in these hard to get early 1970s on issues, you get what you can afford. Not settle for it, but I tell you what, if someone came up to me and the dude said a 1.8, 1.8 according to the comic book room right here is $15,000. Now, 
I don't know if I would ever spend $15,000 on a book because I don't make that kind of money. If I had it to spend and I was just kind of so-so about it, would I pick it up? Hell yes, I would. Because there are so few and far between collectors because you have 103 at a point five. 103 Fantastic Fours at a point five, which means you're lucky to have the cover still attached or to be complete in, in its entirety. If you have a 1.0, there are 90 of them. The highest one that they have is a 3.0 at 251. And according to Comic Book Realm, a 3.0 is 27,500. It's a brand new car. That's probably like a couple of jet skis and a trailer and, and an old Bronco to carry them around in. Like, there's so many other things that you could do, but if that's what you want to get, then get it. Because it, it's not necessarily a fear of missing out. Well, I guess it kind of is. But it's still to the fact that you have a chance to get a piece of of comic book history and you're telling me the most beautiful 1.8 is beneath you that's snob talk this is coming from people who sit there and get what they can afford because they're trying to complete runs now if your whole thing is is a reseller yeah those are the guys that always go for 9.8s but the thing that also kills me is there's so many channels out here that just tell about well i didn't get a 9.8 i got a 9.4 oh fucking well that means there's two little itty bitty things that are wrong with it to, for you to get as close to perfect as possible because 9.9s and 10s are extremely rare almost as rare as these fantastic four number ones now, I'm not a fan of Fantastic Four at all, but my whole point with this is you have a chance to get your Holy Grail. Do you want a dumpy copy? No, you don't. You want a decently presentable copy. And there are decently presentable 3.0s out there. And if you can get your hand on one of those, why would you not take it? You mean to tell me you're going to try and hold off for the half a million 9.6s where there's only two in existence? Really? That's some level of just arrogance and entitlement that I don't understand. I, I, I fought for the longest time not to even record this video, but I want to sit there and bring comic books to the masses. That's why I do like part of Reggie's message. You have standards for yourself and you keep those standards. There's, there's a um like for instance i i went through the uh midtown comics has a uh, 99 cent sale they come with no bags no boards there's a little bit of spine roll on these do i give a shit no no i don't because some of them are filling up of holes that i have in other runs some of them are things i want to try and read maybe it's it's okay um recently i started reading the brian michael bendis run of superman and i actually enjoyed it it is the first time ever I have read a continuous Superman story, not like The Red Sun or not like All-Star Superman, which All-Star Superman was fantastic. I am not a Superman fan at all, even though I went to Metropolis and I don't know why I'm here. But I, I wanted to experience it and sort of jump out of my comfort level and go, this is where I want to go. And this is what I want to do. Now... <clears throat> If I had a chance to get an authentic Action Comics number one, would I take it if I could afford it? Fuck yes, I would. The most expensive comic book on the planet. Would I take a chance to get it? Hell yes, I would. There are people that sell portions of pages for tens of thousands of dollars that have been graded, mind you. And people are buying them just so they can say, I don't have the whole thing, but I got a fucking piece of it. That's how hard it is to come across these. Where, where, where's this? Uh, let's, let's do this. Action comics number one. 
average, <laughs> average grade of this. Look, there are 43 of them. 43 that have gone through CGC grading. 43. It was 350 or 41 of uh, Fantastic Four number one. There's one, 1. 1.1, 2. Like, there's so few of them. This f- 0.5. Where's the where's comic book girl again? Action comics. Six million dollar book. A point five is thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. <laughs> for the three point oh for Fantastic Four is twenty seven five. If I found it, what a hell yes I would. Superman's nowhere near my favorite character. So I would not I would never sit there and think that I could actually ever afford one of those. Like there's one 7.5, one 8.0. That 8.0, I guarantee you, is gonna go for about three to four million. Cause it's just it's it's the only one. There's two nine point oh's. I'm like, come on, man. If sure there's that fear of missing out and you can make that argument and that's perfectly fine make that argument but my whole thing is if it's something that you wanted especially like a fantastic four number one bro you're talking five g's just for a point five would i spend five thousand dollars on a point five hell no i wouldn't Unless I get like an incredible Hulk number one. Give me the first appearance of the Hulk. Point five. How many are how many are there? Let, let, let's go back. Incredible Hulk. Fourteen hundred. There's one nine point four. One. And I call nine point four is the store mint. You are lucky if you can get to the, a regular shop and get a 9.4 straight off the shelf. And that's fine. <laughs> to, to say that low grade is better than no grade is almost a... It, it's putting a line in the sand that I feel is uncomfortable because comic books are already hard enough as it is for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's, there's some people where they say, you know, you shouldn't try to, to collect, uh, amazing Spider-Man. You should just try to collect like the regular Spider-Man. Yeah, maybe, but there's a, there's a factor that you can put into it. And, and you do have to kind of say, what are you trying to get out of it? A few years ago, I had uh, a friend of mine, well, I guess an ex friend ask me what my whole purpose was. For the for my collection that I was doing, what what is my end goal? And I I was like, what is my end goal? And I think for me, in that line of questioning, if I can get from the little amount that I earn and the collection that I have. And I'm more akin towards lunch money comics. Shout out to Mike. You are awesome. I like you. Uh, Because he's like, is it in rough shape? Yeah, sure. But I have it. And that's important to me. And it's not all about what you can buy to flip at the best price. So buy low, sell high. And there's, I feel there's far too many of those channels out here on YouTube. And it always just burns my ass. To just see someone, oh, this is only a 7.0. What's wrong with a 7.0? Oh, that that number just just doesn't look as good as a 9.8. Okay. But a 9.9 and a 10 look better than a 9.8. So you're still a failure. I mean, that's the same kind of thing that you could put on it. It doesn't matter what the condition is. What are you happy with? And yes, that's another point Reggie makes. What makes you happy? Is getting that 2.0 going to make you happy? Are you really wanting a 4? 
Now, in this case, uh, 2.0, there's 95 of them from uh, that CGC I've graded. And there's a 4.0, there's 136. Those are going to run you some money. Do I have that kind of money? Hell no, I don't. Why do you think there's 90 of them at a 0.5? 1.8 starts to get more and it's more plentiful from there until you get to a 4.5 and then it's all downhill again from there. So your average there, like it says, 3.64. It's your average grade. So a 3.5 puts you just slightly under average. So you, you could have this be your barometer. If you want to sit there and get an above average grade, you're going to have to look for a 4.0. There's 136 of them. That's not too bad. So, yes, while I agree, like I said, in part to what Reggie was saying, you also have to look at it from the other side. A lot of people see these videos and they go, oh, well, I don't have a 9.8, so I'm kind of ashamed. I'm not. Does it look good? Does it present well? I have a Thor book that I bought 50 bucks off of eBay. It's the first CGC book that I bought. As a matter of fact, I have it kind of handy. I said kind of. First CGC grade I ever bought. First one. Um, I really like Donny Kate's writing. I, I think it's fun stuff to read. I've never been a big Thor fan until Jason Aaron was writing um, Lady Thor, if you will. I still don't like that Thor was a title instead of a name, but whatever. <laughs> but this was the first one I bought. Very first one. My case got cracked to shit. Getting to me. All of this got cracked. The whole damn thing is cracked. I don't give a shit. I put it in there and it was like, you know, I, I, I gave the guy a positive review. I, I, I was not upset about it at all because I knew it wasn't his fault because it wasn't in the pictures. So it got damaged during shipping. So it wasn't his fault. But I just said kind of sucks that it got damaged in a way, but whatever. And I moved on. He took 20 bucks off of it. So I got, I got that $50 9.6 for 30 bucks. I would have still been fine if he wouldn't have done anything. Didn't bother me one bit. But that's one of those things where, oh, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. Unless you're, you, you make your money buying low and selling high. And there's a ton of people on YouTube that do exactly that. I'm sure he does it too. And Reggie has a whole big old background of, of stuff that changes. And I think it's cool. It gives you kind of an idea of the stuff that he has. And I haven't watched enough of his videos to wonder, because he always talks about the 100K collection. I'm wondering, do you, is your collection 100,000 deep? Because that's insane. And I would love to see it. Like, give me a room tour or something, man. I would watch the shit out of that thing. But my whole point to all of this is... <sighs> You don't have to be rich to get involved into this. You don't have to be rich to enjoy these stories. I'm not. Like I said, 99 cents a piece. I have to buy the bags and boards if I want to preserve them. That's fine. And it's not like I got crap here either. Um, I thought it was a cool cover for uh, Emma Frost, so I bought it. It's an interesting story. Uh, story here that I was kind of curious about so I bought them Venom cover you know I bought it a random 1035 uh, detective comics like it doesn't have to be anything flashy or fancy you can sometimes buy these just because you want to fill out a run see what you can collect I'm not trying to, to, to surpass this dude and I don't know his name but if you can find him it's not, the, not that hard this guy has over 400,000 books. He 
spends four hundred dollars every week on books. And he sits there and says, well, I could watch this movie, but if I watch this movie, I could read X amount of comic books instead of watching this movie. This dude is dedicated. And he is, <laughs> in some cases, an inspiration, if you will. But the entire thing for him is he has a few extra copies of Amazing Fantasy 15. He said every book he has has been read and well-loved. So you can have a lower grade and still enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with having a lower grade. If your standard is still met. So yes, you are right on that, Reggie, but that low grade is better than no grade still stands. Because if you can get something at a Batman 227, uh, let's see if I can show you this real quick. Um, there's a guy, James from Mint Hunter Comics. I, I there was a, a video of his. I wish I would have wrote it down, but he goes, "Good luck ever owning this." He goes, "You'll never own it, bitch." I do, and I say that kindly because I do own this book. This was the biggest thing that I picked up besides. This one, when I went to go see Cujo and Lady D in um, Louisiana. These were the two biggest things that I picked up while down there. At least as far as comic books are concerned. There's a bunch of cool art that I bought and, and things like that. But again, I have this. It's a $1,500 book and it's just there for the cover. No one talks about what this book has on the inside. It's just about the cover, and it's a cool cover. It's a cool-ass cover. I even have this one. It's still a small-ass picture. It's still a small-ass picture. First appearance of Poison Ivy. I have this one. It is probably around here, a 1.8. I'm okay with that because the thing is a lot of key hunters are the ones that drive up all these prices and have all this thing in mind to where you try to, you must get the highest grade possible. You have to get that 9.8. I sent these out, you know, I, I got all this, I got it pressed, I got it cleaned, I, I had all this other kind of stuff because I want to sell it for more and that's fine. But there's, my opinion, there's too many channels and there's too many people out there that are trying to sit there and squeeze as much out as they can when people like me are going, I can't afford that. I'll probably never be able to afford that. I have a bank account right now that is called Holy Grail ASM129. I am saving up for that book. Because for me, I have to get that book at at least an 8.0 or an 8.5. But those are going to run me a lot of money. And I know that I'm probably going to be saving for this thing until I'm 50 before I even see it. That's just how it goes. Because that's what I can afford. But I do have my, not my ceiling, but I have my floor. I don't want to go below this. Because then, yes, you won't be proud of it. You won't be happy with it. But low grade is still better than no grade. Like whenever I, I did those Spidey bags, if I had to pull that out of there and it came out of 7.0, ah, fine by me. Because that was a complete and total just shot in the dark. Am I going to get this? Maybe, maybe not. And just because it's not a 9.8 does not mean it doesn't have value to you. And it can still gain in value down the line. Hell, if I would have been trying to sit there and get ASM 129 like five years ago, I would have been able to get it before the $2,000 price hike on it. It's like, son of a bitch. Now it's even farther out of my reach. But I could I could sit there and, and pull every cent that I have and take all of this and just wait and just 
stored away like it's I'm trying to go into hibernation and I'm, I'm just going to wait and just for, get that one book or I can enjoy my collection. I can sit there and get other things that I can enjoy and still do that at the same time. A hobby is a hobby. No matter how you you point it out, no matter how much you do it, you like collecting stamps Dude, get the shit out of them stamps. I'm not going to know anything about it, but if you want to sit there and talk to me about it, I will listen to every single word you say, even though my eyes glaze over and I have no idea what's going on. But you have a passion about it. And if you're passionate about getting these things, then enjoy it. You only have so many times around this ball of dirt that you're going to be able to go around the sun. So enjoy them while you have them. And if you have a low grade of something, be proud of that low grade. Especially if you earned it. Because it's going to take you a bit to get some of these. Especially something like this. Like my unrealistic holy grail is this one right here. Batman number one. <laughs> I will never own this book except for maybe this one this one I, I, I thought about trying to get a hold of and back when it was on eBay for I think like 160 I should have picked it up then because now it's over $300 like god damn it but I'm never going to own a legit one of these from May of 1940 are you are you kidding me there's no way there's no way. But that's one of those unrealistic things to where you ha I have a set of, of grails that I want to try to get. And I'm four away from getting my top 11. I, I, the, the 11th one is for another, another story for another day. But I'm four away from getting them. Four. Um, those last four are going to run me quite a bit. Um, I could have had put more towards it if I hadn't have bought that NYX three, but I, I was, I was there and I wanted to have a real solid, memorable thing that I could hold on to, to go that I can remember, I can recall so much about that trip just by picking up that book. I got tons of stuff from that trip going through my head right now and I enjoyed it and it's a good piece of memorabilia for me. And that makes me happy. It, it's a 9.4. Oh my God, it's not exactly perfect. It's not perfect. Oh, well. Am I content with it? Fuck yeah, I am. The only other way I would be more content with a book like this is if I found it just out in the wild and no one had any idea and I got it for a buck. I would be more happy to have found that one than I did this one because it would have been a price difference, but that's the only thing that sits there and, and flips that script for me because now I have a five to $800 book that I got for a dollar than a five to $800 book that I paid five to $800 for your hobby is what you make of it. I'm just so sick and tired of people sitting there telling you, you have to get perfect copies. No, you don't. If that's what you're aiming for, go for it. James from Inner Comics was sitting there trying to get an entire run of the Shadows of Batman or Shadow of the Bat at a 9.8. And he got it. And that's where I'm going. That's a, for me, that's okay. Because that's what your goal was. And it, that goes back to what Reggie was saying. If that's your goal, let it be your goal. But I think the low grade is better than no grade is sort of against those people that look down their noses at low grade copies. And there's a shit ton of them out there that do it. And I'm so sick and tired of seeing that happen because I want it to present well, or if I were to go, Hey, you know what? Check this one out. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Instead of doesn't look cool. Uh, I don't know. I see spine ticks and, there's, uh, there's a little bit of uh, one of the corners that's kind of rounded. Um, ew. Get out. If you rain on someone else's parade because they have a lower grade or you have to one of them, I go, yeah, but I got a 9.8. Oh, kiss my ass. All right. I'm done ranting. It's been too damn long. I should have shut up a while ago, but it, it's, it's just been a... a tea kettle for me for so long and to see some of these things like this and especially reading some of the comments on that video I was like I can't be silent about this anymore I have to rant about this so uh yeah um 
any thoughts anything you want to critique me on um and again this isn't a stab at any of them any of the guys that i've mentioned i have i have no ill towards any of them i'm not saying that they're wrong what i'm saying is that there are reasons for it and a lot of it is because there's a lot of resellers that want the highest grade possible to command the biggest price to get back so there's a lot of snobbery out there because you don't have a perfect copy or a near perfect copy because most of these people i've never seen them have a 9.9 or a 10 and some people will charge an extra four hundred dollars on a 10 just because it's a 10 because it's so rare to get so think about that too all right i'm out have a good night and uh yeah want to vent at me back do it i'm fine with it but uh yeah have a great one guys be safe